Hello and happy St Andrew's Day. Welcome to your daily summary of the 86th SNP Annual Conference 2020 and the first ever to be held entirely online. We're on our final day, it's day three. The SNP Annual Conference is three days of speeches, resolutions and voting to shape the party and indeed build the vision for the country's future. Everything that we've been talking about over these three days will be the foundation of the SNP manifesto for next year's Scottish parliamentary election. Here's a wee catch up on what's happened so far. We've had speeches from Deputy First Minister John Swinney, from Keith Brown, MSP Deputy Leader, from the SNP Westminster Leader, Ian Blackford, and we've had an address from Adam Price, the leader of Plaid Cymru. We've also had four resolutions, the first on NHS, social care and lifelong learning, the second on green recovery, then the independent future for Scotland, and finally, equality and human rights. It's been a busy two days so far. Without further ado, let's get into it. Our first speech of the day comes from Kate Forbes, MSP, Cabinet Secretary for Finance. Conference, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to address you for the first time as Finance Secretary. It's important that our party's key decision-making body is still meeting, albeit virtually, like so many families and workplaces around the country. This has been a year unlike any other. Each of us has a story to tell of worry, loss and anxiety. But amidst that, we've also seen glimmers of hope. And it is hope and our confidence as a nation that I want to talk about today. For the second year in a row, the UK government has shown complete disregard for devolution by delaying their budget to March saying it's far too uncertain a time to plan ahead. The Scottish budget has an impact on all of our lives. It funds our NHS, it funds our schools, it ensures that there's adequate funding for public services and it shapes our economy. It shouldn't be subject to the disinterested whims of a distant Tory government. But that risk will always be there until independence. It will give us the opportunity to put our record before the Scottish people for their endorsement. It will give us the opportunity to present them with our vision for our country, how we build a better economy that doesn't leave people on the breadline, how to take decisive steps towards net zero while strengthening our public services, how to deliver a national care service and back our young people to have the skills they need to live up to their potential and ensure that we as a country can live up to ours. And crucially, it will give us the opportunity to put before the people the opportunity to win a renewed, unequivocal, unavoidable mandate for an independence referendum. It will be a year that none of us will ever forget and it will take time to recover from the deep impact that COVID has had on every aspect of our life. But despite the huge costs, we haven't lost our hope or our confidence. And that hope, that resilience, that confidence has brought us this far and it will take us further. The crisis isn't over yet, but we know a better future is possible and we will work tirelessly to achieve it. The choices we make now will change that future. And 2021 will be a year of huge opportunity for our party and our country. So let's seize it. Each day of conference, there are resolutions on different topics. Resolutions are really important as they help the party shape our future policies. First up today is jobs and building the well-being economy. Ideas to reduce the disability employment gap, as well as ensuring that all of Scotland's workers 
including those with autism, can play their part in our recovery are very welcome and should be fully considered for the manifesto for next year's election. Conference, our approach to economic growth is different to that of the Tories. We will not participate in a race to the bottom on terms and conditions, nor will we ditch our current high standards which protect the environment and consumers. And we will develop our own approaches to incentivising enterprise and growth. That is why we now we have more details of the UK government's proposal for free ports. We are asking for views on how best to support enterprise and investment in our communities in the future. And let me be clear, if free ports mean low cost, low wage, low value, tax avoiding opportunities, then I can assure you that is not the approach we will have here in Scotland. We will develop our own approach that puts our aspirations for a low carbon wellbeing economy at its heart. Conference COVID-19 has put into sharp focus the limitations we face as a result of our lack of financial and economic levers. We've had to rely on the UK government's interventions without borrowing our other powers of our own. And we only saw the last minute decision to extend furlough when it was needed to support a lockdown in the south of England. Scotland's needs never were, are or will be the priority of a UK government. So in supporting this resolution, let this conference say loud and clear that we have the talent, the people, the ingenuity, the innovation, the resources, the capabilities, the skills, the education and the industries, and yes, the vision to be independent. Yes, conference, Scotland has got what it takes to be independent. Young Scots for Independence is the young team of the SNP for members aged 16 to 30. Their main purpose is to promote the political representation and interests of young people in Scotland. They also love some karaoke. We caught up with them to find out how they've been enjoying conference. Hi everybody, how are we doing? Hello. All right, how are you? I know bad. I hear we've got some hangovers, is it? We've done karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, karaoke was on last night. You had a better night than me. This year's conference, if you could describe it in three words, how would you describe it? Um, I would say, first of all, it's been very friendly. Um, I think all the debates have been very respectful um, and everyone's views have been taken into account. Innovative, um, with the blether function, um, the nat roulette that's been nicknamed, really <laughs> good. And my final one was respectful as well. It's been very inspiring hearing everyone's stories. Um, it's been quite extraordinary. Like it's a conference like no other. Um, we've never mm. done it virtually before, so it's been an interesting experience, and it has been fun as well. Um, mm -hmm. Like as Corey said, the blader um, section of it. It's been really good getting just to speak to members and stuff. Twenty twenty. Let's be honest. It's been the worst year in existence. I think anyway, it's been horrendous. But as we have written within all darkness, there's always a wee bit of light. So I want you guys to tell me one good thing about 2020 uh, that you can think of. And there must be something, even if it's the fact that it's nearly done. Probably being able to be involved and attend a lot more because time spent traveling and the cost of things isn't so much a restriction. So that's been really good just as a skint student, being able to actually go to everything that I wanted to, mm -hmm. whether that be the party or socially. Well, for me, I started university this year, so um, it's been totally different, but it's mm. been quite an achievement to get here in the middle of a pandemic, so I think I can't complain. Not that I'm making any pre-assumptions about you, but if you're out boozing and whatever and you're at uni, you just have to roll out of bed, and then that's you, you're straight exactly. in the lectures, so that's every, every <laughs> well, the lectures are recorded, so nobody can even see how much of a state I'm in. No, this has been great. Thanks very much. I hope the hangover's all right. Go get your Chinese, your chippy, whatever you're doing. And uh, yeah. aye, thanks again and best of luck for the future. Next up, we have our final resolution of conference, which is all about Scotland and our place in the world. The SNP's commitment to unilateral nuclear disarmament is constant and is unshakable. And I look forward to an independent Scotland signing the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons but we need to be independent to sign it. So I look forward to that day. And even as a devolved entity within the UK, represented by them in the wider world, we've been able to do stuff that demonstrates who we are and what we are and what we want to be. We've been able to set up the world's first climate justice fund, helping some of the poorest parts of the world to mitigate the climate disaster which we all face. We've been able to set up the wellbeing 
well-being economy governments group to work with other governments globally towards the well-being economy, putting the citizen at the centre of the economy. We are a society before we are an economy. People must feel safe, well, secure. That's our vision for people in Scotland. It's our vision for people elsewhere as well. We can help that global situation come about. Scotland and the world is a vision of a better international player, a good global citizen, a Scotland that's engaged with the world, not trying to walk away from it or bray at it from a distance. We can do better than the UK's representation. Some of the ideas here are in this motion. It's a big motion, but we've got a big vision. We can do better for Scotland, and I hope you'll support this motion. Our final speech of the SNP annual conference comes from none other than the big boss, the head honcho, our party leader and Scotland's first minister, Nicola Sturgeon. She had some huge announcements, including bonuses for NHS and social care workers this Christmas and a £100 million winter fund for low-income households. Over to you, First Minister. A very warm welcome to a very cold Glasgow and happy St Andrew's Day to all of you. You know, Scotland shares our patron saint with countries like Greece and Romania. Others like Poland hold festivals and celebrations in his name. That is a small but timely reminder of our interconnectedness and shared humanity. These connections run deep in the ethos of our party. The SNP is the party of independence. We want Scotland to take her place as an equal, independent country, to be in the global family of nations, playing our part in building a better world. Our vision is open, internationalist and outward looking. As an independent country, we can be decision makers, partners, bridge builders, and we have a right if a majority of us want it, to choose that future. That right of self-determination cannot and will not be subject to a Westminster veto. The independence case is a powerful one. More and more people in Scotland are being persuaded by it. And I believe passionately that it is one with the power to unite. An independent country where those of us who live here shape the future and work together to overcome our challenges will be good for all of us. A country fairer and more equal than it is now will be good for all of us. An economy that provides greater job and income security will be good for all of us. Creating jobs, protecting our precious NHS, building a fairer Scotland and forging a new partnership of equals. That's the task that lies before us. And there's no one, no one better to carry it out than the five and a half million of us who live in this beautiful, amazing country of ours. Wherever we come from and whoever we vote for, we all care for Scotland. So let's get to it with hope, love and compassion. Let's continue to support each other through these turbulent times. And then together, Let's build that better Scotland we know is possible. Thank you so much for watching. So that's us. The SNP Annual Conference 2020 is complete. If you've enjoyed what you've seen and you want to get more involved, you can join the SNP at www.snp.org. Next year's election will be the most important in Scottish history. It's all hands in deck and only you can make it happen. That's all from me. Thanks for watching and all the best for 2021.